We are following three big stories at 1030. After Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot was voted out of office, some are looking at whether politicians' futures are tied to crimes in their cities, what that could mean in Baltimore City and beyond. President Joe Biden makes another visit to Baltimore. His comments at the start of a Democratic policy retreat at the Inner Harbor. Our coverage of gun violence disruption program ROCA continues as it expands into Baltimore County. And we begin there. ROCA is planning to help more young men in our region. Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost explains how the program is keeping track of their finances and shows taxpayers how their money is spent. I'm glad to see everybody energy this morning. A lot of laughs starting early, so hopefully that energy turned to a great week this week. Inside the Roca HQ, <laughs> the youth workers and participants are busy teaching and learning new ways of living, disrupting the cycle of violence and healing past trauma. The four-year program has about 250 people involved right now, working with a budget of $5.1 million this year. The funding comes from a mix of sources. It's different based on what the funding source is. In the fall, ROCA got a federal grant to help expand their programming outside the city and boost their after-shooting responses, where ROCA workers go door-to-door -door looking to offer an off-ramp to some of the most high-risk young guys of getting involved in gun violence. Kurt Palermo, executive director for ROCA Baltimore, says transparency is key for the program's success, especially when it comes to funding. We have a commitment and a responsibility to this city, to this state, for any dollar that we're given to be able to show exactly what that dollar was used for. Um, you know, Can that, you do that? Yeah, I mean, that level of transparency is something that we pride ourselves on. ROCA, providing a cost breakdown, says that it's about $13,500 for each participant in the first two years. We're right here by the football field. And that includes the work crew portion of the efforts. That costs money but it's an opportunity for them to work four days a week, and we know that they're safe when they're with us. Like when guys... My first, first day, so... ...help clean up Pedersen Park. Their analysis shows the cost per person is cut in half for the years three and four. So where are we going now? I'm going to go see one of my guys. Roca opening their doors to the press, allowing us to ride along, yeah. while youth workers check in with the participants. My old friend, bro. What's up, Joe? He was down there with Boosie Boo. But that's not the case with other programs in the city working to curb gun violence. Safe Streets is very different than ROCA. But the program has 10 locations across Baltimore using funds from the city and state. But the city remains committed to not sharing some of that information about Safe Streets with Fox 45. We've asked for employee information to learn who's working at these gun violence intervention sites. Fox 45 had to threaten legal action to get hundreds of pages with names of employees redacted. The community-based organizations have kept quiet about how they operate the locations. We've gone looking for details about how Safe Streets works. Are you the site director? Only to get stonewalled. The city, usually leading the charge, refusing to explain how Safe Streets defines what a mediation is, despite often touting the number of mediations Safe Streets has accomplished. Last year, Mayor Brandon Scott announcing a shift in management for the program. The change coming after months of relentless Fox 45 News investigations into safe streets. Does that signal that the previous CBOs that were operating these locations were mismanaging the locations? No, it's about evolving. Instead of the patchwork of community-based organizations, the city moving management to Just Life Bridge and Catholic Charities. That shift was set to be finalized in January 2023, but that hasn't happened. During the March 1st Board of Estimates meeting, the city's spending board approved extending the old contracts with the community groups. City leaders telling Fox 45 News the groups needed more time to finalize their work. We're just making sure that things are crossing every T, dotting every I as we make the changeovers. That's it. Are the locations themselves changing? No, we, we know that this, these will stay in the neighborhoods that they are in and have been in for many, many years. But the physical addresses, are they changing? The, the locations are not Safe streets operates in zones. Correct, zones but they have look, they have buildings that they That'll operate in. That'll be up to the operators. We don't determine where where the buildings are. The operators make sure that they figure out what buildings they want to use. So with the, change, with the change of Thank the CBOs, you. they probably are changing then, right? We've gone to the safe streets locations where the city advertises them to be. Park Heights. Nothing. Franklin Square. No one there. Silence in Cherry Hill, too. 
city leaders continue to financially back the program, while keeping track of the money is spent once it's handed out to the community groups remains unclear. <laughs> Meanwhile, back inside Roca, Baltimore, their work continues, preparing to expand into Baltimore County. To be able to expand outside of Baltimore, not that our work is done here, but it's just, it's a testament to how hard we've worked over the last, you know, four and a half, five years. And keeping track of the progress and all the receipts along the way. We've asked to sit down with Shante Jackson for months. She leads the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, the same organization within City Hall that oversees the implementation of Safe Streets. So far, Jackson has refused to do an interview with us to talk about Safe Streets. But if that changes, we're more than willing to make it happen. In the newsroom, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. And Fox 45 has been investigating the Safe Streets program for more than a year. You can find all of our past reporting on our website, foxbaltimore.com. City Councilman Christopher Minnette wants to increase fines on businesses that allow teens in their stores during school hours. Now, the law against it has been on the books since 2014. The fine is currently $500. Councilman Burnett wants to increase that fine to $1,000. Business owners say the law is unfair. They are violent in, uh, outside there. So if something happened in front of my door, if I go outside and try to tell them, guys, you have to calm down, no, they will attack me. I would push back with the notion that businesses have bear no responsibility. I mean, we have businesses are responsible. If a, if a student comes in and someone under the age of 21 wants to buy alcohol, it's the business's job to say, hey, I can't serve you. Well, the new bill is in response to January shooting at Edmondson Shopping Center. One team was killed and four others were hurt. I'm Kai Jackson. Thank you for watching. Here's another video to watch. Also, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel.